Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another fun edition of Workbench Wednesday. Uh, it's good to be back here, and especially great tonight to be back here with uh, a good friend and a uh, great co-worker, Megan. Megan is, well, as you've met before, one of our project managers at Lionel. She handles uh, many of our lines, including our accessories uh, and our HO line, and um uh, is, it's just someone we couldn't live without at Lionel. So, uh, Megan, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit um, and uh, let them know what we're going to do tonight. I am Megan Frazier. As you said, I work on HO and accessories. I've been with Lionel for about 10 years now. Um, and tonight we're going to be uh, painting one of our new HO model kits that just came in. We actually debuted these kits um, last spring. They took a little while to get here, but totally worth the wait. Um, I'm a beginner, you're the, the pro here, so we're gonna go over how to paint these. Yeah, now Megan uh, greatly underestimates and understates her performance and abilities uh, at this model building stuff. You may remember uh, she came on last fall uh, as one of her passions is everything Halloween. And so she and I did haunted houses. And uh, if you've forgotten what hers looked like here, let me uh, see if I can make this work here we'll put yours up because yours actually i think turned out way nicer than mine but um definitely introduce some new ideas and concepts to things for for sure and why won't it show up there Grr. hang on ryan is having technical difficulty mm -hmm. for the surprise of absolutely nobody Now, oh, apparently I have to have the screen up to share it. And then go back to this one. Oh, so many tabs. There we go. So there's, this was Megan's project from the last time where we took one of our O-Gage um, houses. This was a ready, ready assembled house. And Megan, tell them what some of the things you did to this. Because you, you did some things on here that a lot of modelers in the model train part of the hobby don't normally think of when it comes to enhancing and detailing? So one of the first things I did was I utilized one of our um, figure packs that we had already created. Um, I cut those up, glued them on there. I also created a, a light box with some shadow details in it. Um, obviously you can't see that on the picture, um, but when that lights up, you'd see the shadow details. There's a little like vignette in the window. Also created some banners and um, some birds on the roof there. It was really fun for me to, I, I'm a concept and planner type person. Um, I probably spent more time trying to come up with what I wanted to do for it, draw it out, plan it, pick colors, those types of things before I actually got to the actual execution of it. Um, that really is my favorite part. Um, tons more things I would have liked to have done with it. But again, as I'm first starting out, I, I took the things that I knew how to do and just put them into a model. Yeah. And it, what was really fun about this was you and I came at it from completely different approaches. Yeah. Uh, mine ended up looking like an old weathered uh, beat up uh, thing. And you had this really cool decorated uh, house with uh, wonderful interiors and, and using uh, some different, uh, you know, cutting tools and things like that, that, uh, that I don't normally gravitate to. And so it's going to be fun to come back and sort of repeat that exercise because this was your idea to build the kits. And uh, one of the ideas behind building them was neither one of us would know what the other one is planning. It's true. And that uh, whatever we end up with is not going to look exactly like it looks on the box. Absolutely. Because no matter what scale you're in or, or what project you're working on, um, the fun of this hobby is making it your own and in customization and, uh, and have, and have a lot of fun. So Here's here's what we're looking at, and uh, Megan, you want, or Megan, Megan, you want to talk about the first first uh, first kit up here? I'll swing over to my, I'll bring my messy workbench into here because I have the kit box out, and uh, we'll talk about what we're we're working on tonight. You've got got it there also. Uh, this is one of the, one of the kits. This is two one six seven zero six zero. It's our ice cream shop kit, and by the time we're done with this, we will have two buildings that look completely different and I assume not being ice cream shops. Yeah. So what was really cool about these is that they were actually molded in color. So it, even if you didn't want to paint these, 
right out of the box, they're already ready to go um, to assemble and put on your layout. Um, if you want to get uh, more creative with it, again, you have that option. But just from a stand standpoint of being a beginner or right out of the box, you've already got everything you need right in here with the exception of some modeling tools and some glue. Um, but all of the kits that we just came out with are all molded in color. Um, again, so it, if you don't want to paint anything, that's okay. It's, it's ready to go. All right. So with that being said, I guess we should uh, go ahead and get started, right, Megan? Sure. Um, while we're at it, if anyone has any guesses as to what they think we might be making or coming up with, I'd love to hear what you think Ryan and I are up to. It'll be fun to see. Um, tonight, we're just going to focus on painting. We'll uh, start assembling our models in our next episode and then come back in the third week and put in our finishing touches and details and reveal kind of what we've been up to. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with and seeing if I can execute the uh, the big ideas and plans I have for this one. Well, I'm sure they will both turn out great. And as we go along here, we're going to try and explain step by step for all of you what we're doing. And uh, if you have questions, please feel free to chime in on the chat and we'll, we'll try and post them up here and, uh, and answer things for you as we go. Um, first, we're going to do is unpackage the box. Now, we've both cheated a little bit. We've both kind of opened things up and and gotten started a little bit, but just to give you some sense of what you'll get inside one of these kits. Uh, this is a very basic one, but it's a great one if you're a beginner. Uh, you'll have a number of uh, sprues of different parts. As Megan said, these are molded in several different colors. We've cheated a little bit and already started painting some of ours uh, to, to move things along for tonight. Um, but you have molded in different colors. You've got the, the roof, the walls, window details. I, sheet of glass here for, well, actually plastic for your window glass and some great signs that Megan helped design uh, for the shop that, uh, that you can use. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to use probably about half of this kit to build what I'm building. But even the pieces that I don't use are going to get saved because I'm going to also be adding things to this that came from other kits I've done in the past. And that's a pretty neat way to mix them, mix things up and customize. And it's a lot easier to do than you think. So if you, even if you don't, uh, uh, if, you, if you have some things you want to think outside the box, it's quite easy to do. So I'm actually going to be using everything that came in the box because I don't have any other pieces. So that's how I'm going to go. But I am going to find some interesting ways to use things that I have around the house or maybe outside in nature to incorporate into this model um, later on down the line when we get into the details. Um, I find that I see all kinds of stuff when I'm out and about that I'm like, oh, that would look cute on a little building. So I've been uh, picking up odds and ends here and there and looking at different pictures of real life buildings to, to figure out what I'm going to do with this thing. So I'm excited to do that. All right. So... Step one tonight, we're going to do some, going to do some painting, right? Yes. And um, we're, I'm going to start with the walls on my kit. Megan, where where did you want to start with yours tonight? Um, I started on my walls as well, but um, I did want to ask a question because I, I again started this with no knowledge. I've never painted a model before. Um, I we we both primed these, correct? And the reason that we did that is so before I start any any kit, I I'm used to just priming it now. And it's not absolutely 100% necessary to do that, okay. um, but it does help. Usually, especially when we're using, we're both going to be using a lot of these um, acrylic paints to paint on, and the, the primer just gives it a little bit more tooth, a little bit something else uh, for the uh, the paint to grip on and, and to paint uh, to give you better coverage. It also starts you off with an even surface. Uh, now, what's really cool about this one, and I'm going to try and get real close to it. Hopefully, you can see this. Uh, these walls have a stucco finish, and it's a it's a, a rougher, coarser uh, finish. So if you don't prime this one in particular, you're probably still going to get pretty good results because it's already a pretty textured surface. Um, the smoother the, the piece, like some of the windows, for example, or if you're doing, um, you know, a, a really flat, shiny uh, building, those will get those can get a little bit more tricky uh, with with adhering the paint. But if you don't have a, a cheap can of Rattle spray paint primer handy. Uh, it's one of those things you can you can definitely skip. Um, you can also uh, wash the plastic first. If you're not going to prime it, I definitely re recommend you know washing it down real quick with some light soap and water or even an alcohol swab just to take make sure there's none of the 
mold release uh, uh, left on the on the parts from from the molding at the factory. Uh, the primer will also take care of a lot of that. Uh, but mostly it just gives you an even smooth surface to start from. And the walls in this kit came molded in a white color. I didn't prime the back of it. Right. Uh, even though I'm going to make most of the walls white, I still wanted to prime it first and then right. repaint over it because I'll be doing a slightly different shade of white and a more modeled finish. So I actually, I'm actually okay if some of the gray shows through. Um, and you didn't and sand or buff or do any of those types of things to these parts? I, I have not sanded, sanded or buffed or anything like that yet. Um, okay. Now, when we take them off of the sprue, I will uh, take a file to each edge and make sure that everything is cleaned up. Okay. Uh, you can either take the parts off of the off of the sprue, off of the runner to, to paint them, or you can leave them on. Okay. Typically, I find it easier to leave them on, uh, at least for the first painting, but I'm going to be doing a two-tone finish on this, so I'll be taking them off here shortly to, to do that second, second coat. Okay. So I am doing a, a four-tone paint on mine. Um, I mapped out in a, a design program basically how I wanted the, the building to look and mapped everything out. And I'm already starting with a type of rainbow color scheme here. Um, I, I went ahead and did the first one so that I could line up everything evenly. Um, someone more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? more detailed than me might have like measured it or, you know, penciled out what they were going to do. I'm just going to wing it. But um, again, always good to have some somewhat of a plan when you get in there. And um, I would imagine, Ryan, there are probably not any mistakes that I could make that couldn't be fixed. A hundred percent. It's awesome. remember, it's just paint, right? So you can always paint over it again. Uh, or, uh, or or try and scrub it off, especially with these acrylic paints. Usually if you just dip it in some uh, a bath of denatured alcohol for a little while and a, a, take an old toothbrush, you can scrub all this paint right back off. You'll be back to primer in no time. So you really can't screw this part of it up. Uh, so have some fun with it and, and don't be afraid to, to make a mistake. Uh, and sometimes your best learning experiences come from the mistakes. Sometimes Absolutely. either either because you really know you never want to do that again, or you find a happy accident and things things look better than you expected. Uh, Donald has a good question here. I'll put this one up on this on the screen as we're as we're talking about the the kits and the components. Uh, is the lighting provided with the kits? Uh, in in this particular case, no. Uh, but some of our kits do have lighting with them. It all depends on the kit. Yeah. Uh, and we might be I might be adding some lighting to mine later on. I don't know if you will or not, Megan, but. Uh, I'll definitely be adding on lots of things that don't come with it. Um, lights are easy to add, whether it's a bulb or an LED. Um, we've had our peel and stick LEDs out there and lights for a while that are super easy to add into any building, any scale. Uh, and if you go back into some of the Workbench Wednesdays, you'll see uh, some uh, some programs on those. Uh, and there are other, other kits as well, too, depending on how uh, elaborate you want to get with your building lighting. But uh, one of our newest kits... The, uh, the building on fire, that comes with a complete lighting unit and smoke unit. And uh, we'll probably be tackling that at some point down the road, too, because I've got all sorts of ideas for that one to do. Those have actually just come into our warehouse. If you check our Facebook page, we did a short video showing that they have arrived. Mm -hmm. um, what's really cool about those is, like you said, it's got this smoke unit in it that puts out probably more smoke um, than any other accessory I've ever seen us do. Um, so I'm very excited that those have come in and they're shipping now. So call your dealers. And um, if you want, Ryan, you're going to be at a show this weekend and, and going to have that building with you, aren't you? That's right. We are headed to uh, Denver. I'll be on a plane way too early tomorrow morning uh, and then flying out to Denver to get things set up. Uh, and we'll be out there all weekend at the uh, TCA Rocky Mountain Division's uh, Rocky Mountain Train Show. So if you're in the Denver area Saturday or Sunday, please come by and say hello and, and, and talk, chat with us. And one of the things we'll have there is uh, some of our new HO kits and some of our new O-Gage accessories, including the burning house. And uh, we'll be smoking up the building with that one for sure. Awesome. Now, Ryan, what I've done here with my walls here is I've actually taken some um, painter's tape mm -hmm. to max uh, to, to put my lines on the building. Um, Again, just stuff that I already had at the house, repurposing it to use for modeling. 100%. I'm going to be doing very much the same thing here shortly. Uh, I just, if you've been watching my hands here, I've just clipped the uh, the four walls off of the runner, just trimming the little bit of extra 
uh, flash uh, off of those where I took it off. I not necessarily 100% needed to do that right at this moment, but um, I'm OCD, so that will help. <laughs> if I don't do it now, I'll forget. Uh, just clean these up, and then I'm going to be ready to get started uh, masking a, a line and, and painting as well. So I'll zoom in on one of these here. This one's probably a, a good example because it's really sloppy. Um, and what you can see is that uh, I started off with a gray primer, and then over top of that, I dabbed on an almost white acrylic paint. It's one of my favorite colors. It's almost white. Almost. Almost. Not, Not white, but almost white. Mm. Uh, and it, it's just enough off that it, it has a little bit of a faded and weathered look, and it's not too bright. I wasn't worried about getting really good coverage. Ultimately, the effect I'm going to go for is going to have more of a chipped stucco look. So something probably really like this picture down here. And it always helps if you have an idea in your mind of what you want to create, uh, but you're not quite sure how you're going to get there, go online, Google. In this case, it was old stucco painted wall. And I had more images than I, I could, could imagine and just uh, print off a few. And then you've got something at, at hand to reference as you're going along to see uh, you know, how you want it to look. So the, this will be achieved in multiple layers. Uh, but the first coat was just a very sponged on, dabbed on, uh, sloppily bit of white paint. You can always, if I wanted this to look fresh, I would have gone a little bit heavier, more even. Uh, but I know it's going to have a more modeled look to it at the end. So I wasn't too concerned about being neat with this one. Uh, and the thinner coat also dries faster. Uh, now we primed our models at least 24 hours ago. It's nice to let that dry for a while. So you have a good, uh, good dry surface to work off of. The same is true if you're painting layers upon layers. Um, it's nice to have some, uh, have a fully dry layer underneath it. Uh, in this case, the, the paint is so thin and fortunately the air here in the house is dry enough that it dried reasonably quickly after an hour for this first coat that I can go back and, and do this again. I used a hair dryer earlier to dry my paint because I was um, anxious to keep going. So on my first wall there, after every layer, I took the hair dryer to it and dried it off real quick so that I could keep going. I won't do that tonight. Spare everyone all the awful sounds as I dry those. But um, it really helped me to keep on going to, to see what I was coming up with here. Absolutely. That's another great tip is to have a hair dryer and, and to uh, to use that to dry paint in between your, your coats will definitely speed up the process. So... To keep my lines even, and I only have to do one line, I'm not as ambitious as some people. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is put, I put some painter's tape down here on the workbench. I've got a, um, a cutting board on here that has lines, which is kind of helpful. Uh, so I'm going to use that to help keep things straight, but I'm also going to just line up the pieces right next to each other and get them even so that as I paint across this, the stripe will be all in the same line. And I'm going to try and do this in the order that the walls will go together. That way my corners will line up. So even if I'm off by a little bit, hopefully uh, the only place where it should really be noticeable is in one back corner. And I plan on hiding that with something else anyway down the road. So uh, as Megan said, you can be really technical about this and measure this all out and lay it all out. Uh, or you can do it the way I'm going to do it and just sort of fudge it and be quick and, and done. Um, that's entirely up to you. I'm going to just sort of guesstimate about where I want my, my line to be. Make things look pretty close to even. Go just above the bottom of the window. Tape that down. I'm going to let these dry a little bit and I'm going to switch over to the roof. Um, just so I can let those dry while I keep on going here. Ryan, you said you have plans for your roof. You're not going to use the one that came in the kit. I am not going to use the roof that came in the kit. Um, I'm going to uh, make a new a new flat roof for it with actually a little bit of a pitched roof. Um, not because there's anything wrong with the roof in the kit. It's just actually a little bit too fancy for what I'm going to use. But I will definitely be saving that. Uh, and saving the little finial here that comes for the, the top. 
uh, and keeping those for another project. Um, I have an idea down the road for maybe a uh, sort of like an outdoor uh, porch seating area for a restaurant or something like that, build up some uh, some wood supports underneath that roof and make something pretty neat out of it. I'm, I'm sure I will come up with, with something. If I had time for half of the crazy ideas that run through my head, I'd, I'd get a lot more, a lot of modeling done. Cool. I'm going with kind of like a, a West Coast vibe on this. I know you guessed if I was going to do a taco building, that's not what I'm doing, but I am going to be utilizing a lot of bright colors with this. Um, again, as long as no one looks at it super up close, it'll look like everything's painted even, I promise. I do have to admit, I'm kind of shocked it's not a taco building. Yeah, well, uh, as, you know. As, as long as I've known you to know that it's not going to be a taco building. It'd be too easy for everyone to guess if I went that way. That's true. So I have That's to surprise you. And I'm sure that since this is just your, your first painting experience, you wanted to get this one out of the way so that the taco building will be even better. It'll be perfect. Better. Perfection. And that um, on the O side of things, I did do a taco stand out of our, our new stand building. That is one of my favorite accessories and lives on my desk. So I was I was very lucky, and I think you know one of the best parts of this job is that I get to to design and and model and come up with all the things that I I love and, and incorporate them in there. There's always going to be some little hidden detail that I try to incorporate in in things just to give it a little bit of my personality mm -hmm. why not it's it's supposed to be fun right trains are fun trains are fun if you're not having fun at this at this hobby and this job well then you're you're not doing it right well, i am going to use some pink on this because it wouldn't be me if there wasn't pink on the building so these benches are definitely going to get a nice thick coat of pink paint there you go so right before we came on the air, I was lamenting that I had no idea what color blue I was going to, to use. Blue is not a color, well, I love blues. It's not a color I use on buildings very often. Um, and so I just mixed up a little custom one here using a couple of different shades uh, here on the, on the inside of the label for the box. So you can use every part of these kits for something. Uh, and now to dab on the paint, I'm not gonna use the brush. I'm actually gonna use a little piece of a grout sponge. This is one of my favorite uh, painting tools. Just tear off a little bit of that. Um, actually, tear it off a little bit more. So the, does that Once add texture? Is that why you're using it'll, that? It'll add some texture. And uh, it's, you can get a similar effect by stippling with a paintbrush. Um, but the uh, if, you, if you dab this on and, and rotate the, the sponge around, you're going to get a very unique and different, um, different look. And so that's what I'm going for here. Dab a little bit on, and then I'm going to dab most of it off because I don't want to go on too heavy. And make sure that my tape is down and then I can finally get started painting. So, so Ryan, if someone's on a budget, how easy is it to get paint for these items? I know, uh, and I've worked in hobby shops previously and seen, you know, all kinds of different model type brands and uh, different paint brands and sprays and glosses and finishes. It, mm -hmm. it seems that there's all kinds of different things that you can choose from. Is there anyone in particular that works better than others or that you would recommend or is it really just use what you got? There are, there are different paints for different jobs. It's like any other other project. Um, there are different, you know, different tools for different jobs, different paints for different jobs. And um, some of it is a, a good quality paint, a different material using the right paint for the right job will definitely help anyone's uh, results come together better. Uh, on the other hand, once you know what you're doing, uh, or if you, those who have the, the talent and that, that you have that natural born gift of uh, knowing how to blend colors and do things, uh, will get nearly as good of a result out of a 75 cent can of acrylic paint from Walmart as they will out of the uh, $20 or $10 little tiny bottle at a, at a hobby shop. Gotcha. Um, for, for buildings and kits like this, I tend to actually prefer the cheaper paints um, because I know I'm going to do a lot of mixing and blending. When I get into weathering, that's where I might spend a little bit more or if I'm painting uh, if I'm going to do airbrushing and I'm going to paint a um, 
paint a model from scratch, uh, especially a higher end model there, I'll typically go with a, a, a model enamel uh, that will, will give me better results and a more smooth and even finish uh, to work off of. Uh, but if I know I'm going to dirty it up and, and weather it, I'm less likely to fret over the, the, the color of the paint. Gotcha. Or the type of the paint, because I'm going to be putting so many layers on and, and hiding it anyway that it doesn't uh, doesn't matter. I am just using some apple barrel paint that I got off of Amazon. There you go. Okay. Came in a whole rainbow of colors, and I plan on using most of those colors that came in there. <laughs> I think what's so cool about these models is that, again, you can be someone who's just pulled something straight out of the box and can let your imagination run wild. And there really aren't any any mistakes that can be made on here as long as you, you know, follow the directions as, as far as assembly is concerned. And, and even mm -hmm. without those instructions and, you know, just the base of the building coming up with, like, like you're doing with new roof and new details. Um, the only limit is your imagination, really. 100% true. And the more you the more you practice and the more you, you try and have fun, the, the better off you'll be. And uh, as we were talking about earlier today, your, your last project was an, an O gauge project, and now you're starting on your first HO building. Um, whereas I'm usually the other way around, the O gauge is sort of a, a different one for me. But if you're used to, to working in, in a certain scale, don't be afraid to build a kit or try a project in something completely different and outside your wheelhouse every now and then. It's a, a great way to practice new skills. Uh, and it's sort of, once you get out of your comfort zone a little bit, it forces you to really pay attention to what you're doing uh, and, and think a little harder about, about things. Uh, going to a larger scale, you can do more details than you can in the smaller scales. Um, and then once you've done those details in, in let's say, O or G, I don't, know, I don't want to shrink them back down again. And so it's a, it's a, it's a good opportunity to do different things. Sorry, I was running out of light in the room and then couldn't see what I was doing as far as painting the model anymore. So. <laughs> light is important. I'm glad you brought that up. I feel like I'm sort of staring right into a, a light here as I do this and trying to balance it out with the camera as well. But a good light above your work surface is, um, is just one of the greatest things you can have because you can't put too much light on, on a project to, to see what you're doing. You just can't have too much light. Yeah, I, I will say that the little details on here are a little more challenging than I expected as far as, you know, having nails on and um, trying to get in there in the details. Is there anything that you suggest to maybe prop up or hold up these these little details that I to to paint them so that I'm not sticking my fingers on it? Every there second? are some things you can do. Um... I've used a number of different clamps in the past. As you saw here, I taped mine right down to the workbench so it wasn't going to slide around on me. For the larger parts, like the walls, that works well. Mm -hmm. For really small details, one of the things I use a lot, I mentioned this last week when we were on with the, the Hennings is in terms of favorite tools, is an old uh, wine cork uh, with some sticky tack on the top. Uh, and this is great for your really tiny details to just stick them on in there and now you've got a handle to work from uh, that's that's very easy and comfortable to use uh, a clothes pin uh, works very well um, you can uh, use an old wooden clothes pin uh, they work great as clamps uh, also as a, a, a temporary holder uh, for things so uh, anything you can imagine tweezers uh, hemostats uh, those those work great uh, you can get the extra little sets of hands um, they're basically like an alligator clip on a base. You'll find those at your hobby shops. Uh, so lots of cool cool ways out there to, to handle things. The other nice thing about working with acrylics too, though, is this will all wash off your hand really easily. Clean up with these is so easy. Yeah, uh, That's another reason that I, I really like working with them, especially uh, in a, when your workbench is in the house. You don't have any fumes. You don't have anything to worry about. There's no odor. And now I'm going to peel away my stripe and see how I did. 
a little bleed under here and there, but that's okay. Then the next step is going to solve that for me. So, so you notice, I will try and pick one of these up and zoom in again here for people. I know my my camera is up a little further away from the workbench than I wish it would be. Um, but uh, here's the end result after putting the second coat on. Again, I didn't worry here about making it perfect coverage. And I think actually not having the solid color for the ultimate effect I'm going to be going for, at least, works pretty well here. Uh, I'm also going to just test and see if I go end to end how my stripe turned out for even this. And yeah, I can live with that. So I didn't screw that up too badly. So Ryan, ours are looking practically identical right now on the walls, but I have a feeling you're not going to put some rainbow details on yours. Um, no, I'm not going to go rainbow, rainbow details. Um, this will have more of a red, white, and blue theme to it. Um, but uh, not not all all rainbowy. Uh, but I'm, next step for me is really going to be starting to fade this down a little bit more, I think, and uh, and get into the weeds on it. I'm also going to start working on uh, the doors and windows, or at least the ones I'm going to use out of the kit. Uh, this one has some neat things. This, this uh, runner here has uh, the windows, uh, the door. These are the signs for the the top as the kit's designed. We've got a couple little benches here. Uh, whoops. Just broke one of them off the sprue. Uh, those I'm going to use for for something somewhere. They may be on part of this one, or they, I may move them to a different part of the city. Uh, but definitely going to use these. I'm going to save this door because uh, actually it looks more like a window to me than a door. Uh, I'm going to save this, put it in my parts box, and I'm going to steal a door from one of our older Lionel house kits. I'm going to take this one here that I've already primed. Uh, and use that one for here instead, just to, again, change up the look a little bit. Uh, I'm also going to take off the shutters off the side of the, the windows. So I'll probably go ahead and do that now, just so you can see how that's done. Uh, this one I, I did right before we started. And to do that, I'm going to use a razor saw. Let me snip this off of the runner. Grab my saw. I'm just going to lay this saw right in here along the side. This has a raised edge on it, so it's really nice. I don't have to get a miter box out. And just make a few passes, and this will come right off. So don't be afraid to make changes and make the model your own. Any suggestions or tips as I'm looking at the um, the the stone or, or detailing, like right on the around the building, um, like the stone walkway? Any tips or tricks on how to make those look real? Um, yes, uh, vary the colors uh, a good bit on these. Um, you want to go go that route i'll switch over i'm i'm not going to use the base uh, for mine but i am going to keep it handy because when i glue the sides together this is going to give me an easy way to keep everything square so i'll use the base really just as a uh, guide for gluing all the walls and keeping things square once that's done i'll throw this in my parts box too uh, but there's a neat little wall that comes with this kit a little tiny stone wall that i've lost right in front of my face. Uh, and it's got some similar uh, texture here as well, a uh, nice stone texture. Uh, and so we can do some of that uh, on here. This has also been primed. Uh, it's got a little bit of flash on the one side from the injector pins. So I'll trim that real quickly before I start painting. And I don't have a all of my gray paints out here, but I've got a few. So I'm going to start with some raw umber. And what else do we have? Looks nice into raw sienna. Yeah, why not? And I need a nice gray. I had a nice gray. Might be supporting my computer with it. So, you know, Ryan, as we're working on these and um, people are, are grabbing and buying their own kits to model, I would love if people would 
tag us or um, you know send send pictures of their items to us through Facebook and and uh, Instagram and see what everyone else is doing on their kids. Hundred uh, percent. We we would love it if people would would uh, join along with us. We're going to do this over a couple of shows. Uh, tonight we're going to basically covering some of the painting techniques and tips. Um, but in subsequent weeks, we're going to, you'll see these come together a little bit more, uh, probably by our next episode, they'll be, I think mostly together, right, Megan? Um, but then, uh, adding some detail and then we'll save for the last one, sort of the big reveal and some last minute details to help draw it all together. Correct. Uh, so you've got some time to, uh, pick up a kit at your hobby shop or get one of the ones you've got sitting around since, uh, since you got sent home from the office, uh, and the, for a rainy day project and uh, and build with us and show us what you started with and show us what you ended up with. So for my wall here, I'm pretty much doing my stone wall. I'm starting off doing this very much the same way uh, that I, I dab on paint for for the other colors. And it's, it's, a, it's a pretty rough, rough dab. Uh, I'm not worried about total coverage at all. I'm just going to get a bunch of color on this thing. And the more random, the better. Uh, so there's my first color. I'm not even going to switch brushes. I'm just going to keep keep right on going with it. Here's a lighter color, a little rusty color. I'll use this a little more sparingly. Again, hitting both sides. And all I'm going for here now is a, a variety of values. Just so it's not, uh, it's not monotone. Stone walls come in pretty much any color you can imagine, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, they're rarely one color. It's a little intense on the light. I'll probably go back over that a little bit. I'm also going quickly here, so I'm getting colors that are sort of mixing and blending uh, instead of staying independent. Uh, but that's okay, too. Go back with some of the darker over top of that. If you don't like it, go over it with something else. Just giving my roof a second coat here. Yeah, these definitely do, these acrylic paints do dry a little quicker. So mm -hmm. that's helpful for someone like me who's impatient <laughs> and wants to keep going. So what I'm going to do now that I've given this a bit of a, a texture look to it, uh, I'm going to let this dry. And then I will. next step is I will come back through and highlight some of the individual stones uh, with some of the different colors that I've already used in the base so that you get that more, more of a contrast. Uh, and when that's done, it's going to look kind of like a checkerboard. Um, so after that, then the last step will be to blend it all together with, uh, in this case, I'll probably use a light wash to get some of the mortar in the cracks between the stones. And they'll just tie all the colors back together again. So you'll still have dif distinct pops of color, uh, but they won't be screaming at you. Cool. And uh, and that's how, we'll, that's how we'll do the wall. And then with the wall done, I will just probably take this and put it in my box of scenery parts. Uh, if I don't use it on this kit, actually got something in mind for that already with our fire station kit that came out that's going to become an outdoor bistro for my layout which never gets built because i spend all my time and money on kits <laughs> <laughs> so ryan we talked about the burning house a little bit earlier we do have an ancho kit that comes with its own um burning mechanism as well yes we do um, so you should check that out because again, same smoke effect and in in just a little uh, 
smaller uh, scale there, but lots of smoke to put out. There you go. Good comment for me to center my my work. It's uh, you get focused on on what you're actually doing with your hands, and you you get away from the camera. So, my apologies for that. Thank you, someone, for pointing that out to me. You're trying to get the camera to zoom in on it, not be so backlit too. Oh, okay, I see the texture there. See the texture there. Yeah. Mine does not look like place. that, but I'm but this isn't done yet. This is just, uh, and it's very wet, so this is not not done yet. But I took about three different colors of of, uh, of paint and just quickly dabbed them on. Now I'm going to do something similar here to the walls of the building. Um, now that we've had given that a little bit of a chance to dry, I'm going to use this uh, oyster beige color, sort of a very light, warm gray. Or beige. Put a little bit of that on there, and that looks, in compared to what I'm seeing in some of the pictures, looks reasonably close to uh, some of the bare spots in these stucco walls that I was wanting to emulate. So we'll start with that. And we'll do a little bit of dabbing here. Now you could start with this color as a base and then do this process in reverse with your painted colors. Um, but I'm going to go, go this route with it instead. And what I'm doing now is just very gently where I want to show some wear. Hopefully that's showing up. Uh, I'm just putting a, a few blotches of this down. And that will make it look as though the paint is peeling away. And you're seeing some bare spots underneath it. I'm going to focus a little bit more towards the bottom of the building, since that's probably the part that would get the most scuffing. Uh, the top of your walls will more or less, if you have a building like this kit where it's protected by a big overhang on the roof, the top of your walls probably won't ship as much as some of the lower parts uh, of the building will. You can do as much or as little, meaning absolutely none uh, of this step as you want. It all depends on you and uh, how much you want that building to look more run down. We come here and around the corners a little bit. It's a little intense. I want that out. It's also helpful doing this if you have some spots that you didn't really quite like from your, your first attempt. Uh, it's a great way to hide some of those little mistakes. Uh, let me see here. This wall is pretty good. Like this... This side of the window, that stripe turned out pretty nice, but I got a little bit of bleed under there on the blue, bleed under that tape. I'm going to hide that a little bit with some paint peel. There we go. Problem solved. Now, Ryan, when, when we're assembling this and we're, we're starting to glue, is any of that glue going to... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like if I were to get some of the glue on my paint, does it eat it away or? Uh, typically, no. Uh, and, and what we want to try and do when we glue these walls together is use a very minimal amount of the, the solvent. So you probably won't uh, won't have to worry too much about it um, because we'll be gluing from the backside and not from the front. Okay. Uh, it can. Some glues will attack some paints. Uh, it's definitely a, can be an issue. Uh, and something you want to think about. Uh, and it's also entirely possible we could have assembled these walls and then done all of this work um, after the walls were together, too. Uh, yeah. But I find it easier to paint the parts when I can lay them flat uh, in front of me and, and work down on it instead of having to hold it and turn it uh, and, and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I went at it with the same thing. I was like, with all the masking that I wanted to achieve and the different lines and designs that I'm planning, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have the building fully assembled so that I could really, um, you know, be mm -hmm. more precise with the taping and the and the painting. And I felt like if it had it been assembled, it, it could be messy or I'm a klutz and I could drop it. So better to get it painted first before I assemble it. So here you can see my, my chipping on the wall. Um, I'm not quite happy with that yet. I'm probably going to add a, a second grayer color to that. Um, 
and then I'll also definitely be adding some uh, pastels and some washes over this to change the colors as well. Uh, before I get too much further in that, I think it's it's time to start monkeying around with the windows and figuring what what uh, what colors we can do do there. Um, I'm also thinking I don't like that many bars in the window, so I'm just going to cut out a couple of these mullions. I didn't think of that. Now I'm now I'm getting even more ideas. Didn't even think that I could cut this out. And we'll make that a two pane window instead of four. These are little things you can do that just they're subtle enough that they really change the look of the uh, the final model and make sure it's a little different than the one you see on everyone else's layout. I have seen it and you know you're going to a show this weekend and mm -hmm. I've been to a few train shows and the the things that people come up with and do yourself included it, it's just amazes me uh, all the different weathering techniques and you know people coming up with little signs and details um, I, I think it really gives your your layout a chance to to be more personal to you and let your personality just just shine through on the different types of things that people come up with. Um, you now I always have a soft spot for home and like to to do things that remind me of um, Ohio and I've seen all kinds of different um, buildings that I, I tend to catch those when I'm at a show and see, mm -hmm. you know, oh, like somebody's high school or you know, a, a hometown restaurant or something sitting on their layout. So I think that's really fun to kind of um, add those little details that really make it your own. Right. I'm going to go crazy on this one. Right. For my windows, I'm going to start with a base paint of aluminum because for the time period of this building, everyone made windows out of aluminum because it was cheap and, you know, what you want the most thermally conductive material possible for your, your window frames, right? That's who needs insulation. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna use this if I can get the jar open and, uh, and give these a first coat. And then I probably won't get to put the final coat on these tonight because this is not an acrylic paint. This is a, uh, an enamel paint and a metallic. So I wanna let these sit for a little while and dry after I do this step. But we're, we've already been at it, believe it or not, Megan, for almost 50 minutes now. Wow. Uh, so the time does fly when you're having fun building models. Just curious to see if anyone has any guesses as to what they think we might be planning with these. I haven't seen any come across so far. But I think once we get a little bit further into this, oh, for sure, we'll definitely get it. Uh, yours is, has me very intrigued just because of that crazy color story you got going on. on that. It will all come together and be just amazing once it's done. I can promise you that. And okay. if it doesn't, I'm going to tell you that it was on purpose. <laughs> So while we're sort of wrapping up tonight's work, uh, let me make a few housekeeping announcements here, as, as I'm always apt to do. Uh, if you've been on our social media pages today, you may have noticed we had a new product announcement, a, uh, a special run of the Amtrak Operation Lifesaver number 203, uh, special 50th anniversary unit. I will be making a limited run of 203 of those. Uh, so you'll want to see your dealers to place an order for that for sure. Uh, really neat locomotive and neat story. And uh, as always, we worked with both Amtrak and Operation Lifesaver on this one to make sure the art was uh, accurate, the colors were accurate, uh, and we would get you the best uh, product possible. Uh, that's in our Lion Chief 2.0 line, so it's sized perfectly for smaller layouts. Uh, we'll do an 031 curve. Uh, so definitely take a look at that. Uh, as Megan mentioned, our, we're headed off to our, our next train show uh, this weekend. We will be in Denver for the Rocky Mountain uh, train show from the Rocky Mountain Division of the TCA. Very much looking forward to getting out and seeing people there again. So 
If you're in the Denver area, be sure to stop by and see us and see everybody else there. It's a great show. Um, always looking forward to a little bit of travel. And we've had a lot of things come into the warehouse recently, not just these uh, these kits and accessories, but the uh, the Acellas have arrived, the uh, SD70s, American Flyer Pacifics, uh, 86 foot high cube box cars. Uh, what else have we gotten in our our wooden passenger coaches for our Strasbourg fans? Uh, we've got the cars here now, uh, and these are all all be going out to your uh, to your hobby dealers here. Uh, in the coming days if they're not already on their way to them. So if you have any of those things on pre-order, uh, get ready. Um, we were really thrilled when we uh, unpacked the Acellas and uh, everything was was running just perfect for us uh, in the office uh, from the production samples uh, and the ones right off the boat. So uh, I think everyone's going to be really happy with those. They will be worth the wait. Uh, and what a fun piece that was to to build. Yeah, those were one of the most asked for re-hit items that, you know, I used to work in the call center and we would constantly get phone calls on when are you going to do the SL again? When are you going to do it again? So mm -hmm. very excited to finally see that one come to life again and, and make all those people who've been waiting so long for another one, make them happy. Yeah, definitely not a project that we do every year or every other year or so. A great one to get and we are pretty much sold out of all of that stuff at the office so uh, definitely go to your dealers and and pick one out because we won't be sending any more more out uh, uh in the future these are they have come in and are, are gone yeah i seem to have misplaced the rest of my doors and windows that's why i have a messy workbench and you have a clean workspace. I have the clean workspace. Well, it's been really exciting building with you and learning all these little tips and tricks. And I'm excited to see when we come back here in a couple weeks, what these things start looking like. Uh, as am I. Uh, and and uh, you always tell me that I'm, I am the, uh, expert on this i don't i don't consider myself one i think we're always learning and uh i've been looking forward to this because it, i i feed off of your passion for the product uh and your creativity as well um, and so i will definitely be trying some things on this kit uh in the interior uh, based off of some of the things i've seen you do and and some of the other details i've, I've got some ideas planned uh for uh, ways to make this unique and better so it wouldn't have been that way if it hadn't been for seeing some of your work. So uh, it's uh, it's wonderful to share. And that is one of the things, right, reasons we like to do this with every all of you too and hope that you share because we inspire each other. And that's, that's part of the hobby and part of the fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm learning so much and, and enjoying, like I said, my favorite part is the planning and researching and coming up with my list of all the things that I want to do with the building. So i um, happy to, to find out if I can actually execute it. Um, I'm sure I'll be uh, knocking on your door, your office door here saying, okay, I want to do this. Show me how. And if anyone has any questions and wants to send them in, um, in the meantime, we'd be happy to answer those as they come through. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and if anyone has any any tips or, or anything to help me out to make this thing look amazing, love to hear them. So I appreciate everyone watching and, and learning along with me. All right. Well, it's been almost an hour, so we probably ought to wrap it up and let people get back to their daily lives uh, or watch this uh, if you're watching this recorded. Uh, you know, look forward to the next one. We'll be back in two weeks uh, with part two of our uh, attempts to, to build and, uh, and have fun together. Um, any last minute words of, of wisdom, Megan? Contact your dealers. Uh, again, these are already shipping now. We've got about I want to say nine or 10 of these HO kit SKUs, um, lots of different accessories, figures, uh, plug it, uh, the peel and stick lighting. There's, there's plenty of things that you can add on to these um, that are out there with your dealers now. So give them a call and uh, let them know you want to build with uh, these models with us. All right. 
Well, thank you, Megan. Thank you to all of our, our viewers. Everybody uh, stay safe out there and enjoy your modeling and enjoy the coming spring. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you.